Is that what Andy Warhol does? Yeah. It is. Crazy bastard. <laughs> Trying to copy my idea. Actually, no, I'm just testing out the camera. But this could be an artistic film. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all you Prosby's, we're going to put on a little skit for you guys to kind of give you a feel of the type of residents that live within the dorm. Uh, yeah, that is kind of scary. So. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to announce is concern, uh, concerns the upperclassmen. As you all know, uh, Manisha has left uh, Northwestern for fall quarter. So Richard has informed us that we have to notify the upperclassmen that, that that is a vacancy and anybody who's interested in having uh, uh, that position filled, um, then we could uh, please ask you to drop off uh, your name to any, any of the executive officers and the elections will be next Sunday for that particular uh, position. And we don't want to close away the, the freshmen, unfortunately, this is something that is strictly uh, for an upperclassman since uh, you were not members of our class last year. So uh, please let us know if you're interested in a position. And once again, the elections will be on Sunday. It is, excuse me, guys, shut your faces. <laughs> shut them up. No. Um, it's, <laughs> it's a replacement position, possibly, or it could be permanent. It depends if Manisha comes back. Right now, it's going to be a replacement to the end of uh, this quarter, and it may extend all the way until the next election. Uh, you need a petition, and you can give it to any exec members. It has to be by Wednesday. How many numbers next? I think 20. Richard, wait, 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 wait. I think that's right. Sorry. I have to point out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't want any of you to walk away from Northwestern feeling empty handed. So I want everyone to stand up. Everybody get up. Everybody get up. All you who are sophomores this year who didn't leave the dorm because you guys are wonderful. All right. I want you to all remember how this goes. All right? So I want everybody to start clapping. Everybody clap. Put your donuts down. There's plenty of donuts to go around. You're not going to. I want to see some energy. Heavy clapping. Everyone. All right, all you got to do is repeat after me, OK? I said a boom, shake a boom. I said a boom, shake a boom. I said a boom, shake a lack a lack a lack a lack a boom. Just me. My name is John. midterm season I've seen all these frowns on people's faces lately. So I, but I think just want to inspire you, I want you to be able to do something completely, utterly life-changing for all of you. Take it off! <laughs> <laughs> Not a suggestion I previously considered. Okay. My, first thought, my first thought was, you know, why not get up there and philosophize, you know, try and be the next Socrates? Well, rather unfortunately for my career as a motivational speaker, but fortunately for all of you, I found something better. 
And that something better is in the form of a great work of literature. Capital G, capital W, capital L. And I know you all might say, but there are plenty of great works of literature. And how do they apply to me? Aren't they just words on a page? And I would say, yes, indeed. There are many, many great works of literature, but there is one that so accurately depicts the human condition as to extend into the 103 members of ISRC taking midterms at Northwestern University in the fall of 1998 and completely encompass our situation. But more than that, help us rise above this and stop the torment of midterms. So, without further ado, I present to you this great work of literature. But please pay careful attention to every word that comes out of my mouth from now on, because these are not just words on a page, ladies and gentlemen. These are words to live by. <laughs> Fox. Socks. Box. Knox. Knox in box. Fox in socks. Knocks on Fox in Socks in Box. Socks on Knox and Knox in Box. Fox in Socks on Box on Knox. New Socks. Two Socks. Two Socks. Two Socks. Who sews whose Socks? Who sews whose Socks? Who sees who sew whose new Socks? Eh? You see who sews whose new Socks? Eh? Who comes? Pro comes. Slow Joe Crow comes. Who sews clo crow's clothes? Sue sews crow's clothes. Slow Joe Crow sews whose clothes? Sue's clothes. <laughs> Sue sews socks of fox in socks now. Slow Joe Crow sews knots in box now. Sue sews rose on Slow Joe Crow's clothes. Fox sews hose on Slow Joe Crow's nose. Hose grows, rose grows, nose hose grows some, crows rose grows some. We'll find something new to do now. Oh, here is lots of new blue goo now. Goo goo blue goo. Gooey. Gooey. Goo 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 goo. Gooey, gooey. Gooey goo for chewy chewing. That's what that goo goose is doing. Do you choose to chew goo too, sir? If so, you so choose to choose sir. With the goo goose. With the goo goose, choose sir. Do sir. Through three cheese trees, three free fleas flew. While these fleas flew, freezy breeze blew. Freezy breeze made these three trees freeze. Freezy trees made these trees cheese freeze. That's what made these three free fleas sneeze. Can I say, what do you know about Tweedle Beetles? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, when Tweedle Beetles fight, it's called a Tweedle Beetle battle. And when they battle in a puddle, it's a Tweedle Beetle puddle battle. And when Tweedle Beetles battle with paddles in a puddle, they call it a Tweedle Beetle puddle paddle battle. <laughs> and when beetles battle beetles in a puddle paddle battle, and the beetle battle puddle that is a puddle in the bottle, they call this a Tweedle Beetle Bottle Puddle Paddle Battle Muddle. And when beetles fight these beetles in a bottle with their paddles, and the bottles and the poodle and the poodles eating noodles, they call this a Muddle Puddle Tweedle Poodle Beetle Noodle Bottle Paddle Battle. And, and when a fox is in the bottle where the Tweedle Beetles battle with their puddles in a puddle on a noodle eating poodle, this, this, is what they call a tweetle, beetle, noodle, poodle, bottle, paddle, muddle, duddle, fuddled, waddled, fox in socks, sir. Okay, who is going second? Who wants to go next? This is not a time to be shy. Who would like to go next? Copy us. Wow. How about me? I'm picking. I, I don't know who signed up. <laughs> who did sign up? Raise your hand. <laughs> all right, well, I'm going to. Oh, all right. Me? Oh, right.
name is Jed, and I'm a freshman, and I'm studying computer engineering. And uh, I've been playing guitar for a couple months now. And uh, I'd like to play two songs for you tonight. The first one is by one of my favorite bands, and they're a band called Kingdom's Call. And uh, marvelously in tune. And um, <laughs> can you put your foot there? She rock. I'm going for the starving artist look, so you can't afford a uh, music stand. And the name of the song, the first song I'm going to play for you is The Truth. And it's become very important to me. I heard it in a record store down in Belmont um, a couple weeks ago, and I really liked it. But as I thought about the lyrics, um, I liked it a lot more. Um, one of the things that I've seen in myself, and I've seen in a lot of other people since I came here, is uh, there's a... There's a there's a lot of, not that I'm necessarily one of them, but there's a lot of very smart people here at Northwestern. <laughs> and there's also a lot of very smart people here at Northwestern who need to make sure that everybody else knows they're very smart. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of the things that this song talks a great deal about is the fact that uh, the world doesn't revolve around me. Um, that there was life before I existed and there will be life after I existed. And uh, that ultimately, what matters in life is not contingent upon how well I do on a test and how smart other people think I am. So with that, I'll give you the truth by Cayman's Call.
<laughs> Sit back, relax. We'll be back in a few. Uh, the next song I'd like to play for you then is um, a song by a friend of mine in Miami. He's a very good friend of mine, and he's someone I admire very much. His name is Dave. Uh, he has a last name, but it won't mean anything to you since you don't know him. His name is Dave Guzman. But um, Dave and I are, are both Christians, and uh, the name of this song is Jesus, You Are Love. And um, it, there's a lot of people who have, and I'm not here to preach at you, so if you don't like what I say, that's your deal. That's fine. I don't care. Um, um, I'm not trying to convince you of anything. But uh, there's a misconception that, uh, you know, I've, I've seen bumper stickers that say, hate is not family value. And that's very true. Hate is not family value. It's not a very nice thing to hate things. It's a nice thing to hate things that are wrong, but uh, hate in general is not a good thing. But a lot of people miss the point that Jesus uh, was all about love. That's, that's what he came about, and uh, what he came for, hi, I'm an English major. But, um, but uh, this song is about that, so this is Jesus, Your Love. He was born a man, flesh and blood, got his power from the Lord above as he cried out, Father, forgive.
a good lesson. All right. This next song is um, a song, um, I guess, that's about um, what a poor man's made of. But that's the third song. So, this one. Anyway, if you know the words, you can sing along. Thank you. 
I think if any of you are musically inclined, you're going to find that over the years at Northwestern, see, I'm a senior, so I know everything. And the thing is, you're going to realize that you're going to have a lot of complex emotions, and you're going to try to get them out of every, pardon the disgusting imagery, orifice of your body. And so the one I'm going to share with you tonight is my mouth. And this is a song I wrote about a relationship I was in my freshman year. A female will remain nameless, but I think you'll all hear a little bit of yourselves in the words I sing. <laughs> Yet again, accompany me on guitar, Emily Fogman. All right. So. Oh, my 
entered. His name, we have learned, was Benny. And although he once had principles, he abandoned them to live as a lapdog to a wealthy daughter of the revolution. A one, two, three, that's bull, he said. Ever since that cat took up the fiddle, that cow's been jumping. The dish and the spoon were evicted from the table and eloped. They've had trouble with that milk and the moon ever since. Maybe it's a female thing. Cause who's gonna leave Saturday night anyway? Well, ain't so bad. The dish and the spoon, for instance, they were down on their luck. They come knocking on my doghouse door and I said, not in my backyard utensils. Go back to China. <laughs> the only way out is up. Elsie whispered. Oh, Lisa. Say, still thirsty? She asked. Parched. Have some milk. And so I lowered myself beneath her, and I held my mouth to her swollen udder, and sucked the sweetest milk I had ever tasted. <laughs> <laughs> on board. And as the harvest moon rose over Cyberland, we reared back, and we sprang into a gallop, leaping out of orbit. I awoke singing. Only thing to do is only thing to do is jump over the moon. Only thing to do, only thing to do is jump. Only thing to do is jump over the moon. Over the moon. Over the moon. <laughs> Super, whatever it's called, granddad, like really old, right? And so he's like, uh, he's like, you see that fence over there? And young man in the like, yes. He's like, he's like, you see the wood? You see how it's, it's pure oak? He said, I built that. I built it with my own hands. I drove it into the ground in the middle of March. It stood straight for a hundred years, never tilted, never broken. No one's ever gotten through it. But do they call me old man McCallahan, the fence maker? And uh, young man McCallahan's like, no. And he's like, he's like, exactly, no. And he's like, you see that barn over there? It's, it's huge, it's, and no animal's ever died inside of it. No animal has ever has ever burned inside of it. It's stood proud. No water's gotten onto the cows. But do they call me old man McCallahan, the barn maker? No, they don't call me that. He says, you see that bridge over there? So, yeah, says, you see, you've seen how many people fall in love on the bridge? How many people walk over it every day? No one's ever fallen in, no one's ever died. It's never gotten wet. But do they call me old man McCallahan, the bridge maker? No. no. And so finally, young man McCallahan's like, geez, why don't they call you any of those things? And old man McCallahan says, because you fuck one goat! <laughs> Alright everybody, thanks for waiting. Um, we're gonna sing a little song by, if you guys know Weird Alex Yankovic. Uh, it's kind of like a little weird and it's got some like funny words, whatever, so like, just kind of like, maybe not like with a classical choir boy song, so just kind of like, listen along and have fun Oh, we are called Pedro and the Boy. <laughs> That's Pedro, as you already know. I'm Phil. Rico Paco. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's Zach. We've been waiting on it. Why, look. It's a letter from my dear sweetheart, Mary. I think I shall read my letter. <laughs> it's over! Oh! 
up. Well, I heard that you were leaving. Leaving. You're gonna leave me far behind. So far behind. Cause you found a brand new lover. You've decided that I'm not your kind. So I took, I took your name out of my Rolodex. And I tore all your pictures in two. And I burned down the malt shop where we used to go. Just because it reminds me of you. That's right. You ain't gonna see me crying. I'm glad you found somebody new. Cause I'd rather spend eternity eating shards of broken glass than spend one more minute with you. Well, I guess I might see what kind of dinner. Bitter, do you up, do you up, in the dumps, down in the dumps, as I'm stranded all alone in that gas station of love, and I have to use the self-service pumps. So honey, let me help you out with that suitcase, suitcase, you ain't gonna break my heart in two, cause I'd rather get a hug. And watch you going out with other men. Oh, oh, oh. I'd rather slam my fingers in a jar again and again and again and again and again. Darling, can't you see what I'm trying to tell you? I'm bothered, and my blood is soaked up by leeches. Leeches. So I spit on the toenail too. On the clean, on the bathroom in Grand Central Station with my thumb. I'd rather jump naked into a huge pile of thumbtacks <laughs> or stick my nostrils together with crazy glue. I'd rather dive into a swimming pool filled with double-edged razor blades than spend one more minute with you. Yes, I'd rather rip my heart right out of my ribcage with my bare hands and throw it on the floor, stop it until I die. <laughs> says, massive cock. And, and he's like, oh my god, what do I have to, like, what am I going to do? I, this is on national television. I, I have to get Mother Teresa, like the kindest, saintliest, gentlest woman, to say massive cock. And, and he's just like, oh my gosh, it's so embarrassing. My family's watching, they're in the audience. And so uh, he looks at it for a while, and finally Mother Teresa says, well, you're going to give me a clue. And he's like, well, god, he's like, geez, he thinks about it, he thinks about it, like his whole family's watching, and he's just kind of silent. So Mother Teresa says, well, is it something you can eat? And he's like, oh, jeez. <laughs> and he's like, he's running the back and forth in his mind. And he's like, uh, he's like, uh, well, I, God, I, like, I guess it is. And Mother so Mother Teresa says, oh, is it a massive <laughs> Think about it for a second. <laughs> Anybody have a song they want to sing in a rap? Can't stand the laboratory man. What? Can't stand the laboratory man. I don't know that one. Let Orin sing it. Come on, Orin. 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 Yeah, Orin. Come on, Orin. Come on, Orin. Come on, Orin. Come on, Orin. Talk about politics. Something good theory about this. Work it. Okay. The campfire song. I thought we were going to sing campfire. All right. Sing it. Anybody else want to stand up at the front? Is anyone else? Start for attention like the three of us. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Sorry, I just don't have socks on. Um, yeah, um, Stan, Stan, the laboratory man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the words are, should I sing it? Yeah. Yeah. Alto or um, Just or sing it. <laughs> Stan, Stan, the laboratory man, the chief inspector of the outhouse can. The tissue, the tissue, the paper, and the towels, and he listens to the sound of the various bowels. <laughs> Under the ground, where all the little fishies go swimming around. Stan, Stan, the laboratory man. Now we need an ending. We need something that rhymes, because I forgot it. <laughs> something that rhymes with... They're back. They're back. Something can... They're back. They're back. They're back. They're back. Yeah. They have a real song to sing. <laughs> so it's like it's chilled out by Christine's feet. <laughs> We're going to make a decision. to the coffee house. You guys made it a success. It's good to see so many people down here. And uh, have a good evening. Thank you all for performing. Thank you.